three, two, one. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Francesco and what I do in these videos is break down productivity tips, tools and techniques to help you move forward with your productivity. So in this session what we're going to do is actually run into like a very old friend and this very old friend is Remember the Milk. Um, and I'm not sure whether anyone can remember this one, um, but it launched back in 2004. And essentially, like many of the, the other applications, it's a task manager that allows you to manage all of your kind of you know, tasks, your activities, as you go across your day. Um, and I remember when this was uh, a very popular application. So as I mentioned, launched in 2004 by two Australian guys. Um, and basically, it kind of hit real peak times in 2012. So it kind of registered, I think, about 2 million users in 2011. And then it jumped up 2.5 million users uh, near mid that year. So huge amounts of users were getting on, on board. And then it jumped another million to 3.5 in March 2002. So as you can imagine, an application that grew quite fast, but has been a little slow recently, um, obviously with a lot of other services. Um, I'm not too sure they've kept up, but now they've re-released um, Remember the Milk. And it's a brand new application that kind of just puts a new spin on it, um, has some new iOS applications. So to so just an update, there is a brand new web, Mac, uh, iOS device um, applications, and Android, as well as BlackBerry uh, 10 and Fire, which I was quite surprised that they're working on the Windows and Linux versions. So I want to, what I want to do in this session is specifically jump into the application and go through some of the things that specifically they've changed. What I want to do as well is I want to go over the general features of the, of the application because some of you might not have known what was in the previous version and might be interested of this being your new task manager, your new place to be all productive, put all your stuff there. So I'm going to go through all of that now. So one of the main features they've launched is subtasks. And as you can see, you're now allowed um, to actually organize all of your tasks through subtasks. They've also got some really strong search functionality as well. Um, organization is obviously key. So they've moved uh, the ability to kind of drag and drop and move properties, colorful new tags, um, sidebar navigation, custom sorting in groups. Uh, and then adding quick smart um, functionality. So as you can see here, um, they've added some sort of you know functionality where you can add stuff really quickly, very similar to to do is ten. They've also got some other kind of sharing features where you can give tasks to other people. You can kind of go a bit deeper with your profile as well um, and remind in depth as well. So, but what I want to do in this session specifically is go over all of the applications inside this. As you can imagine, this long list uh, is quite functional. Uh, there's a lot of apps inside here. They've done a, a lot of work on the brand and that's what I've been most impressed by actually. Um, so if we just go over to the top, um, I mean, I don't know whether you've seen the new iOS and Android app. They've done a really good job at making it look fun, interactive, and really on point with uh, what their mission is. So let's jump into the web application. And this is something that I'm using in free at the moment. So I've contacted them to see whether I can get access to a premium or, or pro account um, to go a bit deeper. But I will go into detail on what a pro account includes. So I signed up to this for free uh, on my iOS device and also on uh, web and also on my Android too. I will be probably reviewing them separately. So as you can imagine, many other task management, you've got, um, like many other task managers, you've got a navigation bar down the side. Here you can have all different types of uh, folders, but here are the main ones they give you when you start out. So inbox, obviously, uh, very clear, very similar to Todoist inbox and Evernote. Uh, you can store the ones that you haven't organized yet. Uh, and then it organizes them based on, obviously, the date that you've put in the due dates um, and then others given to others tasks um, so you can monitor at a glance. So I really like that one, actually, because obviously you might want to actually just see everything you've, like, you know, been able to push to other people and see that progress. I'm not sure unless you do a to do is filter or a wunderlist filter, you can actually see that from a glance. But anyway, going down to the lists, you can actually break them down into certain sections. So they give you some straight away, but you can add additional ones too. They have this really quirky feature down here called smart uh, lists. 
And basically, you can assign a name and actually go into detail on the filtering system. So you can actually switch it to a query, um, a query, uh, search query. So you can actually go into more detail, like uh, it must be in the inbox, um, in an inbox, so inbox two, I'll just put, I don't know whether you wanted to do that. Um, and then, you know, you can see all those specific ones to that. But there's there's much more. So if um, I put in, it has the word cats and doesn't have the word dogs in, um, cats as a list there. So what it will do is it will search all the detail in there. So for example, if I were to click into here and make a task called cats, and as you can see, when you create a task, uh, it looks quite simple to do. Um, you add a due date here. So a nice little kind of, uh, very similar to Todoist, uh, a very uh, nice little kind of bit of detail comes up there. Um, you can also set, uh, so this, sorry, I went a bit too fast there. I went a bit too fast there. So this is a start date. So that's quite nice. Um, obviously, you can start today. And then you can actually add it to a list specifically from there. So I'm going to add it to personal. And then I'm going to add the priority as well. Um, and the amount it recurs. So I'm going to recur every week. Um, and what did I not do here? I'm going to create a tag called uh, test. Ooh, test tag. <laughs> As you can see, it's starting to look quite detailed. So I want to actually make sure I pick it up in London, um, <laughs> give an estimate of how long it will take and then assign it to someone. So I'm going to assign it to myself. So as you can see, a very query heavy task, but in all fairness, quite a lot of detail there. And as you can see, it's starting to populate all of the lists. So once I go over to personal, um, I can see that there. I can see that once I click into it, um, this panel comes up on the side and gives you all the context specific to it. You can also add the subtask, but as I mentioned, I believe they're a pro, uh, which is nice because I like this. So you're allowed to see your incomplete and completed um, ones without having to actually keep them in your incomplete section. You can also add notes. So uh, hello, uh, just save that there. This very similar to to do is comments. Uh, and that's quite nice because obviously once you're working in a team, you can add the detail. But anyway, just going back to this, uh, you can also have the search functionality here. So you can uh, postpone uh, certain tasks in this segment. So if you're kind of busy and you're like, oh, I need to postpone my two days, you can do that there. And you can specifically assign tasks. So if I wanted to go, oh, I can't do this now, I'll assign it to Bob, um, then I can do that there. And also change all of the priority due dates and also tagging there, which is quite cool, uh, as well as bulk duplicate and upload. So you can also assign by all of this stuff. So task name, priority, due date, and then advanced is, is in the pro section. But what I mentioned earlier when it, it, it actually was dragging it in from smart lists. So this has been able to um, detect that it has the word cats in, which is pretty cool. So what I really like about this actually is as you start adding uh, these sorts of things, um, the, the, the cats uh, and all of the tasks come up. So if I were to put, um, uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, photos, uh, take a photo as a task, for example, um, and I set it to, the specific time of, okay, this is going to take me 30 minutes, add. Uh, what it will do is obviously uh, slightly laggy, I believe. Um, oh, no, it, that's clever. It didn't have the word cats in. So take, um, need to go up here, take cat, cat's photo. Okay, now it should be like, oh, yeah, there's cats in it. So now it's gone down to here. And as you can see over here, it's actually estimated the amount of time that it's going to take for a specific um, that specific set of tasks to be done. And I really like that. And um, that's something that really appealed to me when I saw this first. And obviously uh, being able to see the completed as well, because obviously this is a, like, it's very similar to Todoist, very, actually very, very similar visually to Asana. But having that kind of context over here that gives you that project overview without actually making it too complicated, that's sweet. So they did a good job with that. Um, down here as well, you can see contacts. Uh, and what's nice about this is you can actually uh, specifically go into someone that you wanted to add. So, uh, you know, you can invite people. And once they have their own profile, you can see all of the tasks that are associated to them. Maybe I'll be able to do that when I'm on, um, when I'm really testing it to the, the, the length. But, I mean, with tags, I think you'd have to 
associate them to projects or something like something like that because i can imagine that the the way that this heavy lenience to adding lots of data to the tasks um like all of this data is really valuable when you do it and it almost forces you to do it because it's up front and it's like oh i need to get rid of all of these buttons before i press yes this is a real task so what I'm saying here is that the tags might not actually be essential. Um, the the smart list, supreme, clever, um, and and actually all of these details like time and you know all of those location stuff, you might not actually need tags. But down here you can also see locations, um, so you can actually add specific locations um, like home and work, and then obviously assign them to specific places, which is great. So as you can see, it says what it does on the tin. It does what it says on the tin. It does what it says on the tin. It doesn't say what it... Anyway, um, basically, this is a really refined system. As you can see, they haven't gone mental on being able to make this look amazing. After using it a couple of times, just to input a few tasks and just basically try out the kind of feel of it, I'm impressed. Um, this is something that... I'm a bit worried about because obviously it's a very nice experience. Um, and obviously on mobile too, I've had a little play, very similar experience. I'll be able to do a review on that. But once you find an application that you do like and that you do find appealing like this application, you have to kind of uh, result on focusing that they will find a revenue stream from it where the app will be around for a long period of time. Because a lot of the time when you like, you know, you love an application, it tends to die on you. Very similar to Sunrise, or, or not, not necessarily Sunrise, but there's other applications in the past that have had really good user experiences, but haven't been able to capitalize on the business or money side of things and have failed and had to shut down based on not being able to get any money. So, I mean, this is a great application. Uh, it looks slightly better on mobile, but what I really like about this is it kind of goes, it, it, it just, it forces you to be, that kind of context productive, um, and that's nice. Other little hacks with it as well is you can shuffle this menu away. Um, if you want to get on some tasks, it kind of got that note appeal and that note look to it. Um, you can also, obviously, as I mentioned, go over the kind of details there. You can search tasks, and uh, and then it pops up and brings up all of those. And you can also save uh, that search as a specific smart list. Um, as you can imagine, that's quite useful, but obviously you can go a bit more in detail with the criteria of each search. So up here, you actually get an indication on notifications, so you can see whether friends or family have assigned you something. You also have in Pro the ability to go offline. I want to go into detail in a second on that because that's going to be really helpful. Keyboard shortcuts are beautiful in this. If you've got the time and you really want to kind of go in depth with these, it's worth it. If you're a pro user or anyone like that, um, obviously, as you can imagine, being able to add all of these make the, I don't know, they just make the experience a lot more snappier. I know on Todoist, I'm like crazy fast now because I've slowly learned all of the keyboard shortcuts. And when I'm adding tasks, it takes like two seconds to add them just because I'm like, that's just over a period of time that I've learned. And I definitely think you can replicate that on this kind of service. So what I want to do now is delve into some of the pro features and kind of run through what I think about this and whether you should go for it and what kind of person would be perfect for this. So as you can see, the pro feature, $39 a year. Now, that is about the same amount of Evernote for a year, which I guess is reasonable, um, and obviously you get a whole host of features. So let's go through those features and what you get. Um, you get subtasks in the Pro. So that's important because obviously you can you know, break it down into more bite-sized chunks. You get unlimited sharing, uh, which is quite nice. Obviously, with an application like this, you kind of have to persuade the other person to get involved with it. And it's very similar to other applications, but... Um, you know, that kind of process of going, man, you've got to try this out and get on it so that you're here and I could be here and we can do stuff together is a laborious one, but it's something that it can be quite valuable uh, and can be quite useful. The next thing is color your tags. And as you can see, when I went into here, it kind of defaults that specifically. It doesn't give me the ability to kind of color my tags. 
that might be really cool for you to do. I know it's really handy in the likes of Vunderlist and Todoist to do that. Advanced sorting. And this allows you to go a bit deeper with grouping your um, your tasks. The reminded service is actually quite interactive. Um, so what you can do specifically, um, and I'm not sure whether you can see it on here, but once you've entered that task and conceal the context, you can actually add a reminder in the field here. And on a specific time, you can actually add really high levels of detail, um, which is quite useful. So email, uh, things like texting, things like location, and that can be really handy. You can actually go into a huge amount of detail there. The next thing is obviously on Android, you can have the ability to see widgets and you can't get that on iOS, but on Android, definitely. And badges where you can see stuff at a glance. I actually thought that would, wouldn't be a pro feature, but it is. Um, sync with Microsoft Outlook. And as you can imagine, a lot of the services um, allow you to sync all of your office uh, work, but this apparently have been heralded as one of the best to communicate with Microsoft Outlook. Um, so definitely worth checking it out. And I will be reviewing Pro. Uh, I just need them to send me over a kind of a pack of some sort so I can go through it, um, seeing as I'm covering it now. Anyway, the, the next thing that really has attracted me to even trying out this service for a couple of weeks is the offline web app. And this is something that not many companies do. I know that the only two on Vunderlist, uh, Todoist, obviously Evernote do their own kind of Chrome app. It's not very good experience, but the likes of Vunderlist and Todoist do a great job at this. And apparently they continue that experience. Being offline and working on the web app is attractive. It is a very beneficial for Chromebook users, as you can imagine, but very beneficial for those looking to kind of sync when they get back online. Uh, or kind of go off for a quick second. I know the worst thing about Trello is actually you do all this work and then you press like, I don't know, you you drag something over and it says like no internet access and then you refresh it accidentally and you panic because obviously it doesn't store all that information. You go back to square one. Anyway, there's unlimited storage. Obviously, you can uh, unlimited uh, storage of completed tasks, which is quite valuable. And obviously, uh, double votes when you ser select uh, product ideas, early access to the testing program, and priority support. So as you can imagine, there's a list here that goes into detail. Um, as you can imagine, they, they do add a lot of value. Um, and I really like, obviously, their branding. And I think that's a reasonable price. Um, I think them being a new application, they could lower it by maybe $10 just to get the ball rolling. But anyway, uh, I think it's a reasonable price, even at $39.99. So anyway, guys, that is a quick overview of what I think initially of uh, Remember the Milk. And this is something I'm going to be reviewing on iOS. And uh, when I get the Pro as well, I'm also going to be going into more detail with it, uh, showing you all of the little functionality and I think I'm going to commit to using this for a full week over Todoist. So I'm going to pause my Todoist and actually transfer all the tasks over and see what my entire experience is with this for a week. So anyway, guys, I hope that was a useful overview of what this can do. Um, I want to go over to use cases soon. So people who are using this or, or whether I found any specific use cases or hacks or even keyboard shortcuts that can get you guys going with everything. So anyway, guys, I just want to thank you for all the support recently. Um, I really thank you for subscribing as well. If you haven't, I'd really appreciate it. So thank you very much, everyone. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.